In this video, you will learn how to build a model context protocol or MCP server for industrial data using Python and FastMCP. Step by step, I'll show you how to create Python functions that access data from an Opus UA server, convert those functions into MCP server tools that can be accessed by any AI agent regardless of the framework is built on, and then we'll test our MCP server using MCP Inspector. My name is Gudzai Mandi Teresa, and I regularly publish tutorials on industrial data and AI right here on this channel. So if you're new here, make sure to subscribe so you never miss any of the videos. This is part four of a five part series on how to build agentic AI for industrial systems. If you're jumping in fresh with this video, don't worry, I'll give you all the context you need to follow along in this video. All the code for this tutorial is available on GitHub. You'll find the link in the description below. So in a previous video, I demonstrated how to connect a long chain AI agent to industrial data sources, such as an OPC UA server and a timescale DB database. This was done by manually mapping Python functions into long chain tools. But here's the problem. If you introduce another AI agent that also needs access to the same tools, you must repeat the process by creating another set of custom connections and mappings and a third agent and the cycle repeats. And the result is that you have multiple AI agents accessing the same data source, but each through custom one-off integrations. So clearly this approach doesn't scale. Now, what if instead of building custom connections every time, we had a standardized server that exposed tools and data in a consistent way? That's exactly what the model context protocol does. MCP standardizes how LLM-powered AI applications connect to tools and data sources. With MCP, you can build once and use everywhere, avoiding the constant reinvention of integration logic. Now, MCP follows a client-server model, and there are three main participants in an MCP architecture. There is an MCP host, which is an AI application or agent that manages one or more clients. And then there's an MCP client, which maintains a dedicated one-on-one -on -one connection with an MCP server and retrieves context on behalf of the host. And then we've got the MCP server, which provides tools, resources, and prompts to MCP client. In short, the host can connect to multiple servers and each client manages its own server connection. Now, the foundation of MCP is its primitives, which are essentially standardized building blocks for communication. There are server-side primitives, which is what the server exposes to the client. These consist of, number one, tools, which are executable functions that an MCP client could call, e.g. file operations, database queries, or API calls. The number two, resources, which are contextual data sources that may be of interest to any client. For example, OPC UA tags, database records, or some API responses. And then number three, prompts, which are reusable prompt templates that the client may utilize to get the best results from what the server exposes. For example, this could be system prompts or some few short examples. And then there are client-side primitives, which is what the clients expose to servers. And these consist of Things like sampling. Now, because you don't want to tie an MCP server to a specific LLM, the MCP server needs to be able to utilize whatever LLM the client is using to request some model completions or request services of the LLM. For example, an SQL access MCP server can ask the client to generate queries from natural language while staying model agnostic. There is elicitation whereby servers can request more input or confirmation from end users. And there's also logging, where servers can push log messages to clients for monitoring and debugging. Now, finally, MCP supports two transport options. Standard input-output transport for local process-to-process -process communication and HTTP transport, which uses HTTP POST for requests, and then optionally HTTP server sent events for streaming responses. Now in our demo, we will build an MCP server that wraps around our OPC UA server. The server will allow agents to interact with it consistently without the need for repetitive custom integrations. 
Okay, so let's go ahead and start building our MCP server to enable AI agents to access industrial data. Specifically, we're going to expose OPC UA server data through MCP. So let me show you what I've got running right now. I have a Python script that acts as an OPC UA client and is connected to an OPC UA server that's running my simulated batch plant. So if I quickly pull up my ignition scatter here, you can see the visualization of my batch process. There's all the equipment with their current sensor values updating in real time. So let's quickly walk through what this Python script does. So here I'm configuring my OPC UA server endpoint and the tag IDs for the OPC UA data points that I'll be accessing. And then here I've got an enum class to convert all my machine states into descriptions. And then here I'm creating the batch plant client. But more importantly, I've got these two functions, get material availability, which is basically a function that reads the tank levels and tells us how much material we have available in each tank for production. And then secondly, we've got this get machine states function, which basically reads the current operational states of all my machines. So let's go ahead and run the script to see what it does. So as you can see, if I run this main method here, which calls the get material availability and the machine states, it returns the current values of the tank levels. And then it also returns the current states of my machine. So if I open up my scatter system here, you can see this is the current values that I'm reading. So this is all through an OPC UA server using the OPC UA client. So what we want to do now is we want to take these OPC UA data access functions and transform them into MCP tools. This way, AI agents can access them in a standardized manner. We're going to use the fast MCP Python package, which gives us a high level interface for building MCP servers. And then we'll test everything using the MCP inspector. Okay, so first things first, let's get our dependencies sorted out. So I'm going to use a package manager called UV. So if you don't already have it on your machine, go ahead and install this package. Okay, so once you have UV package installed, we can go ahead and initialize our project. We do that using the UV init command. And then next we want to create a virtual environment. Okay, next we need to add a couple of packages to our requirements.txt file. So here we've got the async UA, which is the package that we're currently using to turn our Python program into an OPC UA client. And then here we're going to add the MCP package. So let's go ahead and install these dependencies in our virtual environment. Okay, so now that we've got the necessary packages, let's go back to our Python script and start building our MCP server. Let us start by importing the MCP server. Next, we initialize our MCP server. And I'll give it a name. Okay, so we've initialized our server. The next thing that we want to do is to define our Python functions as MCP tools. And doing that is as easy as decorating our functions with the MCP tool. And then we will do the same for the other function. So what I've done now is I have defined two tools on our MCP server, the get material availability tool and the get machine states tool. Now we need to actually run the server. So I'll get rid of this. And then I'll specify the transport as standard input output. Okay, so now we've got our MCP server and now we need to go ahead and run it and test it using MCP inspector, which is a browser based environment that allows us to explore our MCP tools, resources, prompts and everything else that our MCP server provides. So to start the MCP server and run it, I'll use this command. Okay. 
Okay, so as you can see, our MCP server is running and you've automatically started our MCP inspector. So already you can see this is the Python script that's running the MCP server. And then here, if I go ahead and click on connect. So here we can go under tools and then we can say list tools. And then you can see here, this is where our functions or our tools start to appear. Get material availability and get machine states. So if I click on get material availability, so you see this is the tool, this is the output schema for the tool. If I run the tool, you see that we actually get the values from our tank levels. If I open up my ignition, you see this is the same value that we're getting here. And then if I go to machine states and run the tool, you see we actually get the current state of all my equipment. Now here we're only exposing the tools via MCP server, but you can then go on to extend with things like resources and also prompts. So we've successfully built an MCP server and tested it using MCP inspector. Now with our MCP server, we've solved a key challenge, giving AI agents standardized access to industrial data through reusable tools. But there's still one more challenge ahead. What if we have multiple AI agents in our system, not only needing access to tools, but also needing to communicate and exchange information with each other in a standardized way. That's where the agent to agent or A to A communication protocol comes in. So in part five, I'll show you how to build a multi-agent industrial AI system and implement the A to A protocol to enable seamless communication and collaboration among your AI agents.